Bills being introduced around the country would require that school-age girls, as young as 11 or 12, receive a new vaccine. It guards against certain strains of the human papillomavirus, or HPV. It would force sixth graders to be vaccinated against a sexually transmitted infection, an effort being fought by people like Dr. Richard Kerr, a practicing OBGYN for the past 33 years. I think it is very ill-advised for the state to require vaccination with a vaccine that has been used on only a few thousand folks uh, with very short-term follow-up. And I think that it's really ill-advised for the legislature to substitute its judgment to the, over the judgment of parents. This has really become a parental rights issue more than anything. When, when you tell a parent that they can't make the decision about uh, medical decisions about their child, um, when, you, when you block them from doing what they know is best for their kid, uh, that's just plain wrong. That's not good public policy. Why would someone seek a religious exemption? It's no surprise to Jameson Taylor, who's authored a book on the subject. Taylor says drug companies like Merck have derived many of their vaccines from aborted fetal tissue. It is against the Christian religion, it is against the faith, uh, to go to force someone else to violate their rights to conscience. And that's why it's so important to have vaccine exemptions recognized in the law. State legislatures should be careful of infringing upon the rights of conscience of uh, the people who vote for them. Merck has been first to market with its HPV vaccine they call Gardasil, which for now is relatively expensive. The currently available vaccine requires three shots that are about $120 each at the uh, wholesale price. There is also, of course, some, some charge for administration. The overall immunization series therefore costs well over $400. The vaccine prevents two subtypes of HPV that accounts for 70% of cervical cancer. But getting to that critical stage is an eight to 10 year process that can be detected by a simple pap smear. So, Dr. Kerr says, what's the rush? Cancer of the cervix among those who get even occasional checkups is a rarity, and there is no reason to rush into this and uh, do this other than, other than the fact that if Merck doesn't get its brand of HPV vaccine mandated by the iron fist of government, it's not going to get totally entrenched and be the main, uh, main vaccine. Others are going to come along. Mark Benjamin is a reporter for United Press International. He's done investigative work on the vaccine approval process used by the Centers for Disease Control. Benjamin claims more recent vaccines have been given the nod amid the shadows of conflicting interests. A lot of the conflicts of interest that we've seen at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have grown over the past decade to 15 years. Over that same period of time, the CDC has essentially doubled the number of doses children, the CDC says children should get. States like Michigan and Utah have defeated bills that would have added the HPV vaccine to the scheduled list. Lawmakers in Maryland withdrew their bill. Perhaps some of them felt too many questions have been left unanswered. We don't know how long immunity will last. We don't know uh, how, how effective it will be at actually preventing cancer. It will be years before we know that. Dr. Joseph DeSoto also has grave concerns over the Gardasil vaccine. DeSoto is a cancer researcher for the National Institutes of Health. It does not cover most subtypes. It only covers about 10% of the subtypes. It is true that the four subtypes that it does cover currently are responsible for 70% of the cervical cancers. However, once they're suppressed, the other subtypes again will obtain an evolutionary advantage in growth and they will become dominant. This vaccine will have absolutely no effect against those subtypes. These are incomplete vaccines which will not do what they're supposed to do and that's prevent cervical cancer. What's even more uh, disturbing is, is that this vaccine has not been adequately tested in nine to 12 year olds. And this is the age group in which the proposals are focused towards. 
In a poll taken by MSNBC, 69% agreed parents should make the decision on whether their daughter should be vaccinated against a sexually transmitted virus. And 75% worried that Merck was more concerned with profit than what's best for the girls. To, to require immunization for a sexually transmitted infection, uh, I think uh, there is no public interest to be served and certainly not enough of a public interest to, uh, to override the liberty issue. I really uh, think the government is overstepping its bounds on this. I think in general, parents should be allowed to make these sorts of decisions. Many believe it is hypocritical that health care providers, and especially nurses, would support mandatory vaccines for young girls when they themselves refuse to be vaccinated. According to the CDC, Vaccination coverage levels for health care providers is only between 10 to 40 percent, and they are the ones in closest contact with the sick and most likely to contract and transmit disease. The American Nurses Association says vaccines should be voluntary for their members. Yes, Merck stands to make billions if Gardasil is mandated in all states. But the vaccine, having only been approved in July 2006, can give girls headaches, make them dizzy, slur their speech, and give them muscle weakness and joint pain. All these risks to prevent a sexual infection that is not spread through casual contact at school. I cannot believe that in United States of America, the legislators who sponsored this bill really mean for the law to say that no girl may enter the sixth grade unless she has been immunized against certain sexually transmitted infections. In the Third Reich, maybe. In the United States of America, that's absurd. It's not the right thing to do. This is just not good public policy.